Yes, well, um, really early on, um, if I go back to that time, we were encouraged to find our own placements when we do practical experience. And, and I approached um, a, a woman called Sue Hetzel, um, who, whose work I really respected. And at that stage in Adelaide, she was heading up a, a service for child and youth health that was meant to be on the cutting edge of finding new ways of working with young people and families. And when I went into that team as a student, I just found myself immersed in um, opportunities to go over to the Family Centre in New Zealand and starting mm. to look at the interface of culture and gender and mm conversations about um, how to work really respectfully with families when young people were in crisis. So I just found myself in the middle of these, this placement, which, which was just fascinating mm. for me, and where I knew that I wanted to think and learn a lot more about, I, I guess, finding a framework that would enable me to go ahead with the work that I was becoming interested in. Mm. I went on a search. Oh, I did it. Yeah, I went on a search. You went looking. I went looking for... How some... did you know to look at? How did you know that that's what you wanted to do? Well, I was, I was a mature age student. I've been working in schools, um, you know, by this stage. I've had some lived experience. I've, I've been in a major institu the major institution of high schools and seen the impact of, of those discourses on young people. Mm. And I was looking for something different. Mm. I was looking mm -hmm. for something that I thought would mm. enhance young people uh, in their worlds. And so I was on a search. Mm. And um, it was really on that placement um, where I started to think a lot more about gender and culture mm. that um, I, I uh, did an intensive with Michael White. And it was during that intensive that something really clicked mm -hmm. um, and it was to do with uh, realising that um, there, there were ways of thinking and working that enabled people's experience to be put in context, mm -hmm. which has become mm -hmm. the central thing for 25 years, I think, in, in my work mm -hmm. around what I call, and other people would call, the politics of experience. Mm, mm, mm. Um, Is that the phrase mm. that, uh, that that resonated with you? That, or was that like, yeah, something that, that calling the politics of experience, was that uh, how it was described earlier on? Or? I don't think so. I think that's how I'm, how I'm, yeah, how I'm conceptualising it now, now mm -hmm. that there's something to, that I wanted to think about mm. and... and get a handle on, which was to do with how to put, um, how, how to really learn about what was happening in people's lives and how people were managing those circumstances mm -hmm. in a way that would hopefully be enriching of their lives. Mm -hmm. And so that that's mm -hmm. what I became excited about because that had been absent mm -hmm. in some of the other mm -hmm. conceptual frameworks which I've been introduced to in my study. Mm -hmm. and, so the other, the other thing that really, really stands out um, that has been life-changing in a really, uh, in a way that I you know, um, value so highly was um, when you and I, and it starts so back in, ah, um, oh, it's over twenty years ago, but in response to the um, uh, Royal Commission. Um, into Aboriginal deaths in custody, which I think was um, 18, uh, 19, 19. 19. Yeah, the work we did was 94, but the actual Royal Commission was before oh, yes. that, so it was um, 1990, I think, to mm. 90. So anyway, the end of that time. Um, to be, what, what then was at the forefront that I really wanted to have to grapple with was the whole construction of identity through our cultural heritage and who we are. And I really had not had to think much about my place in that mm. until that work. Mm. I hadn't had to think much. I'd thought much about being a woman, but I hadn't thought much about being a white woman. Mm. And I don't think I even really knew what it meant mm. until I was forced to think about it. Um, 
in a, in a really a really heartfelt mm-hmm. way, which was um, you know being alongside Aboriginal people who had lost a loved one mm-hmm. to, to death in custody, and mm-hmm. that work was totally embedded in the politics of experience. Mm-hmm. It was when we read the transcripts of what happened to people, we saw the po- politics and power and everything, institutional power, culture, dominant ideas being played out in the most powerful and abusive of ways. So again, it was through through those relationships and that work that I was searching and wanted to find effective and rigorous sort of ways of responding to that kind of dilemma of people. Seeing people you know, in this, uh, the biggest possible picture uh, seeing seeing the, uh, the the relationships of power that, that shape them, uh, seeing um, that they are more than that mm-hmm. uh, in, in your experience, um, uh, and and then and but then there's this uh, another, another step or another something that happens in 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 that work with Aboriginal families of of, of noticing your own place in all of that, mm-hmm. uh, noticing your own place as a as a white woman. Mm. Um, and and yeah, like uh, what I wonder what made that possible, or how you were able to do that, uh, mm. and not yeah, and not to stay with not noticing. There were a strong team of us working together, Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal workers, mm. and we were all helping each other with what had to be thought about and what had to be grappled with, and that was alongside the really fantastic teaching from the Family Centre about, which had already sparked my interest, mm-hmm. about cultural experience being, they would say, the single most influential determinant of meaning of who we are. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, it does make, the colour of my skin does make a difference mm-hmm. to how I've lived and what my experience has been. But so some of it you're saying... Did come from the having spent time with the family centre that that mm. that there was some something in that that made yeah. it made it possible to to I don't know if you call it owning your own privilege or recognising. Or... I think it was a took it was a long journey, a journey. And, and, mm. I, and I still it, it that's yeah. something that we don't I don't we don't stop I don't, mm. I don't think but um, something really. Um, Pivotal happened at that time when, when I was asked by um, an Aboriginal colleague to join her and another non-Aboriginal woman to start running anti-racism workshops. Mm-hmm. And that work continued for a 10-year period. Mm-hmm. And we were working with um, government departments to invite them to examine the influence of dominant cultural meanings and how that was the imposition of those meanings and those frameworks on Aboriginal people, what effect that had. Mm. And that was they were heavy they were heavy days and heavy mm. work and fiery and, mm. and like, passionate and heartfelt and anguishing and all those things. But again it was um, you know how the work presented opportunity to learn and to mm. really have to grab, have to find things that would would make a difference. I didn't want, you know, to be, yeah, to, mm, 